salutations, everyone. Oh my God. I Let me tell you guys something. Thank you so much for rolling with us, sister. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Miss Sabrina Soul, and you are here on The Missing Link. Of course, this is the beginning, the kickoff of season two, and I have someone beside me that's so amazing to kick the season off. You guys know, like, I had an amazing season for my first season. Definitely check out those past uh, videos, but to start this season off, I mean, I know you recognize this face. I mean, I feel like we should have been on this. I mean... How can you not know who this person is? But anyway, I am so honored to have you here. We have Kayla.com with us tonight, and she is a cast member on Ready to Love Miami, which is actually streaming now on TV. And we are on episode 10, and I am super, super excited to sit and talk with you yes. and to find out a little bit more about Kayla. And I'm sure a lot of other people are. Right now, we got 36 people in the chat, and it's just going to keep going up yes. and up because I know they want to know more about you as well. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with me on The Missing Link. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. So people are in the, yeah, people are in the chat right now. They're, they're going, they're excited to see you. So <laughs> hey saying, all, how y'all doing? <laughs> Happy Money Monday. I hope y'all had a productive day. Okay. And shout out to my soulmates. I see you guys. Shout out to everyone in the chat and shout out to everyone that's watching. If you have not liked this video, please, as you get a chance to hit that thumbs up. I would so greatly appreciate the support. Anyway, you guys know I don't waste no time. I get right into it. And if you have any questions for Kayla, if I do have a moment, I will go ahead and ask the questions that you do put in the chat if we have time. Now, let's go ahead and begin. My very first question to you, Kayla, is who is Kayla Ward? Well, Kayla Ward is a Georgia peach, okay? Um, I am originally from Georgia. I am a Georgia girl. Uh, my family is actually not from Georgia, though. My parents met there and married there and had me there, but um, they're both from other places. But I grew up in Georgia. Um, I'm very outgoing, funny, um, very honest and loving Gemini. I, um, I'm Gullah Geechee on my grandmother's side. Um, mm -hmm. So I am, you know, indigenous. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> and you're so beautiful. And I just want to say, because I'm a huge fan of you, yours on the show, I, not to get off subject, but I remember the first time I saw you, I was like, her skin, her skin is so beautiful. I just wanted to say that to you for in person for the first time, because I don't know if you guys know, but you know, Kayla and I, we don't know each other personally. Today is the first day I've ever gotten a chance to meet and to speak to her. So I did want to definitely tell you that. Thank, think, you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, literally, that is just that's the that's the gullah. I, I don't I don't do anything special. <laughs> but I do drink a lot of water, a whole lot. So yeah. well, I got a whole routine. <laughs> but you know, it's good. But you you are you're beautiful. Your skin is amazing. Thank you so much. Um okay, so you talked about where you're from now. Where did you grow up? Like mm -hmm. like where so grow up, grow up. Grow up, grow up, because I grew up, grew up in Maryland and D.C., so. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in Atlanta. Okay. I lived outside of the city, like DeKalb County, Conyers, like Coven, you know, outside of the city. But I went to school in the city. I was an arts kid. I went to a performing mm -hmm. arts high school for ballet, mm -hmm. for dance. Um, and I really just... I was like, a, I, well, not a city girl, but I love like, I love the dynamic of living in the suburbs and going into the city for like school or work. Right. Um, and so that's where I grew up. I really had a great, you know, upbringing. My parents both did very well and I had access to a lot of great resources and um, great, great things growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of dance did you do and do you still dance? I did ballet dance. I was a very, very serious ballet dancer since I was wow. nine. Yeah, I was actually in a professional ballet company when oh. I was 16. Um, I danced professionally in, in four professional ballets, um, five. One with Atlanta Ballet as well, Ballet Ethnic Ballet Theater. So theater. And so, uh, yeah, I I was a big ballet dancer, and I still da I still teach dance currently, but oh. I've been out of the industry a few years now. After I like 
was in ballet, I kind of transitioned to mainstream dance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I got, um, I won a scholarship with the New York City Dance Alliance Outstanding Dancer. So I got to go to New York and train with the Rockettes and like, it was dope. And so I just transitioned to like entertainment. So that's like background dancing, tours, shows, mm -hmm. videos, like, mm -hmm. you know, 10 hour mm -hmm. rehearsals and, you know, the people that make the Super Bowl and the people that make these award shows pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's us, honey. Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. And see, that's something we would have never known from the show. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. Let me, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm talking to you like we just girlfriends. I got to slow it down. <laughs> yes. Well, I love amazing. dance. Though. Dance is my passion. I still go to ballets. I get very dressed up. I still go to ballets. I was going to ask you. I so love, I love dance. Is that yeah. what you wanted to be growing up? Like, did you want to be a ballet dancer? You're like, yeah, I wanted to be the first black prima. Dusty Button got me though, you know, but I wanted to be the first black prima for a major ballet theater. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. So you, where you're at in your life right now, what did you end up becoming? What did you end up doing? So I ended up doing what I do best, talking a whole damn lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to school for journalism. Um, I went to Howard University. Shout out to my Bisons, HBCs in the building, Hilltop High, you already know. Um, but yeah, I went to Howard. I got my journalism degree there. I started working at Radio 1 TV 1 um, and just started building my career from there. And then I transitioned to my media and marketing, like doing strategy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and doing big pitches and big like strategic plans for major companies. And so mm -hmm. that's what I do now. I just actually transitioned to a to the automotive team. So now mm. I'm going to be doing basically strategy for Audi and Toyota. So I'm super excited. Wow, be. that's amazing. So yeah, I've been doing that for a, a while now. Um, I I could be, I should be a lot farther along, but I still was dancing. Like when I first moved to South Florida, I was like, I am not like corporate America. Ugh, I'm okay. I'm going back to dancing. I love dance. Yeah. So I got back into dance. I got my agent. I was working like I was doing good. And then on the side, I would like bartend and work in restaurants because like, you know, you can have a ton of gigs one month and then the next month have one gig. So you have yeah. to make sure you keep, you know, that. But that's also hard. Like being a starving artist is hard when like you don't have consistent income and like yeah. I'm a little bougie. So I need consistent income. Yeah. Mm. Right. So I'm like, OK, I'm going back to corporate. But yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for since since Howard. Mm -hmm. Right. So how long have you been down in Florida? I've been down here four years now. Mm. Mm -hmm. wow. I love Florida, though. The weather, you can't beat the weather. It's very relaxing. I have like mm. a little lake outside my balcony. I mm. mean, yeah, it's a very relaxing, serene place to be and definitely will like lift your spirits versus being in the city. But then I can get to Miami in like 35 minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty yeah. amazing. So on top of all those amazing things that you're about to do, you're also an entrepreneur. Like you have side businesses as well. Um, so what side, So I know, of course. So can you tell me about the businesses that you also do on the side, hobbies or anything that you know you want to tell us about on top of that? Because I know you got some businesses. I do. Okay, so during the pandemic, um, okay. a business was born. I always loved like event planning and hospitality. I mean, that's what I did for years yeah. while I was dancing. And I also got into that because that's what I did in college. Like those were my mm -hmm. college jobs. I worked at McCormick and Smicks. I worked at Cheesecake Factory. Like when I was in college, I, I, I was actually making good money working in fine dining in DC. So mm -hmm. I was like, this is, this works for me. Like I can talk to anybody, make people feel good, give, show people a good time. That's just mm -hmm. my personality. So yeah. um, during the pandemic that stopped though, and people were still trying to figure out how do I bring that and have that same energy. And a good friend of mine was like, oh, I want to have a Christmas party for my staff. But like it's COVID and like, well, it's not COVID. And it's we're, we're kind of back, but we're not really back. Like, so I was like, well, why don't you throw something at your place? Like, I'm really good at this. I, I'm the person in the family that does this. Let me throw a party for you. And I threw him an amazing Christmas party for his staff mm -hmm. of like probably like 50 people. And um, I was just like, I love doing this. This is stuff. This is stuff I should do. Started right. doing balloon design and yeah. everything. And yeah, I just kind of came out of that. Wow. That's amazing. So on top of your business, so what is the name of your business? Yeah, it's called the Monet Group Design. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the, the Monet Group is a holding company that I founded in 2013, um, my Howard year. And I always just did like anything I did, I did under that. And so everything kind of bursts out of that. But yeah, I do everything from luxury beach picnics. Um, if you want to party on a yacht, an engagement party, baby shower. Um, I worked at so many restaurants, so I got catering down. I have props. I have everything. So oh, wow, kind of happened naturally, and I really enjoy it. So let so now with that being said, say for instance, someone in New York says, "Kayla, I need your services." Would you have clients like in other states and yeah. other places? Would you fly? Yeah, out a good deal of my clients have been in Atlanta, where I'm from, because mm. I, <laughs> you know, I have a big network there, and. Uh, the only difference is, is that like my vendor list is smaller in terms of like, if we need whatever we need, but I can still make it happen just because like the biz is the biz in any city. You just got to know who to talk to and how to negotiate rates and things of that nature, which I've, I've mastered. So I can work in any city. It's all about the mastermind and the organization of it all. So, yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cause I feel like, honey, you, you give me the right coins. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. Like Anywhere, you, honey, I can get there. Okay. Honey, I like, can you get need there. Me to go to Dubai? You really want me to come to Dubai? Okay, let me give you my Hold on, let me get my passport number for you. Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go ahead and cash at me. Okay. <laughs> Send me a little something, something. I'll go ahead and book everything up. Right, exactly. I mean, so, I make travel arrangements like I can. <laughs> so who would be your your target client for uh, the Monet group? Yeah, so my target client is young professionals, um, basically 30 to 65. Mm. Um, people that are in have are basically people that are having moments in life, you know, mm -hmm. getting married, having a baby, um, getting divorced, uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting engaged, a uh, a, you know, a milestone birthday, like 30, like 35, like 40, like 50, uh, like 60. Um, and, and people that appreciate those moments. And, and I don't know, it's just like events bring people together. You can have yeah. family members that have never spoken. Like even at my, I had a huge 30th birthday party that I produced and <laughs> planned. Uh, and I got family members together that haven't seen each other in so long. And it was such a good time. And I just think that like events and parties and stuff like bring people together. Yeah. And and that is like you, you kind of integrated a whole bunch of things because I know you said with the business, like I remember and I did. And of course, you know, everybody knows I stalk all my interviewees before I interview them. Everybody knows that I stalk you guys. OK. <laughs> and I do remember seeing pictures. You had that big circle thing up with like the balloons and it had like Kayla.com. It was for your birthday party, you said. Right. And, yeah. and, and I was like and you were like, yeah, this is the Monet group. They did that. And you had a whole table set up for the Monet group with flyers yeah. and business yeah. cards. And, and I was like, that's smart. Like in real life, like yep. you're at your birthday party promoting your business, but people that don't know what your business is thinking, oh, this is the Monet group. Let me grab a card. This is a beautiful event. And they're not realizing that is really your stuff. You know, they had no idea that I was there, that me, I flew two right. of my team members up from Florida. And then I had hired just random people in, in Miami, like people from high school, people I knew. Right. And nobody had any idea that I was up at 10 a.m. Right. And I put that whole party together by like 1 p.m. And then I left and went back to the hotel to hair and makeup. And then I came back like I had just shown up. <laughs> but it, hello. But that's what I try to let people know all the time until you get on, until the people that, you know, until they start working for you, like until you get there, honey, you got to do what you have to do. You have to show up for you at all times. And sometimes yep. you have to do that. And yep. I commend you, honey. I thought that that was really, really genius that you did that. And it was really smart. I like that. And I enjoyed watching the video and everything on your Instagram. Oh, oh, yeah. There's a video on my YouTube, too. There's like a full behind the scenes on my YouTube, too. If oh, um, y'all wow. want to check it out. But yeah, that party was dope. I'm actually about to do an engagement party coming up for a good friend of mine. So okay. you guys can watch out for that on my channel, you know. 
Yeah, but yeah, we're going to get to all that, honey. Speaking of your channel, you are also a content creator. And just to let anybody know, and you also, Kayla, it looks like my internet is going down. It's been crazy ever since the hurricane. My oh. power went out recently. So if you can't hear me or see me, just talk to the people <laughs> if I go out because <laughs> they're here for you and they're all in the chat. So. Okay. Um, so just to let you know, because I'm looking at it now and it's looking kind of crazy and I hope I don't lose you or y'all don't. Lose I mean, it sounds fine. You just look a little like uh, spotty. Jake, yeah. Oh God. I hope it's okay. Mm. But it looks, it looks fine though. You just look okay. a little bit spotty. Yeah. Okay. So you are a content creator and I okay. did see, of course, you have your own YouTube channel and I, I saw it, but I would love for you to tell the people, like, what kind of content do you create on your YouTube channel? Because, of course, you guys, after this interview, you need to go over to her channel and you need to go ahead and subscribe to her channel as well. But we're going to get to all that. We're not going to jump ahead. We're not going to jump ahead. So tell everybody what kind of content you create on your YouTube channel. So on my YouTube channel, I so on YouTube in general, I'm in the talk space. I like to talk. So I'm on quite a few podcasts. Um, and I'm, you'll see me on lots of different channels like Beat Taylor, um, Crew Season, and I'm also a resident panelist on the Lapeef Network. Mm -hmm. So I'm in like that talk space, like that panel, like debate kind of space. So on my channel, you know, I do have my Wednesday night show where it is a panel and we do talk about different topics in that same style. Mm -hmm. But I also am more of a lifestyle. So I'm like, I know people will be seeing me doing a lot of things, you know, I'm outside and I'm with a lot of people. So it's really lifestyle, like showing you guys what I do and like being in the in crowd in Miami and things like that. But then it's also showing you more like the behind the scenes of my business. Mm -hmm. And then moving forward, you guys are going to be able to see more content from me giving my advice on what I think I have learned through this journey on the show, through this, just my life in general and the advice mm -hmm. that I can give to women. Mm -hmm. um, because I truly think women listen to other women. Being in that in the talk space that I'm in, and it's like men criticizing women. And yeah, I get it. We listen into what men have to say, but sometimes I don't think it really lands unless it comes from another woman. So that, and then there's going to be fun stuff like try on hauls, mm -hmm. um, rate my outfits, uh, and probably some challenges and mukbangs too. People tried to get me to do mukbang. I just felt some type of way about just being like. I don't know why people like watch people eat, but <laughs> apparently I eat sexy and cute. So we're going to be eating some food and I cook a lot. So uh, I'm definitely going to do some mukbangs of my food, but also like spots around Miami so that mm -hmm. when people come to Miami, they know where to go eat. Yeah. So there's a little series that's going to start on that. So like anytime you guys are in South Florida, y'all can y'all can rely on my channel for like dope spots to eat. Yeah, like that. that's cool. That's so cool. Mm. Okay. Um. And yes, and just to let everybody know, I'm going to say it in the end too. But since I keep saying that I'm going to say it, just to let everybody know that if you go down into the description box below, I have all of Kay Kayla's connects. I have her Instagram, her websites, her Monet group, her YouTube channel. Everything is down in the description box below. So don't forget to follow her on social media and subscribe to her YouTube channel. But we're going to talk okay. about all that. We're going to say it all again at the end because I need you to say it this time. So I'm jumping ahead. But since you're saying it, okay. Okay. Now, now, we're going to move forward. We're going to talk okay. about the good stuff because this is the stuff that people want to hear and know and they want to know because they like, what is that? Do y'all do the makeup? Y'all got paid with a glow? Do y'all get paid? Do y'all eat? Do you got to pay for your own food? So <laughs> I have seen the questions. I know the questions, but we're going to act like I don't know people. We're going to act like I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we're going to ask Kayla. So you were on a reality or you are on a reality TV show. Can you let the good people know what reality TV show that you are on? So I am currently on season six of Ready to Love Miami. Um, I, it was a very interesting experience. <laughs> and, uh, so if anybody wants to check the show out, where can they see the show? Where is it? Um, playing yeah, on? they can see. Yeah, of course. They can see the show every Friday at eight, seven central on own. You can also watch it on the own app or Hulu. 
also Discovery Plus and Oh, Pilot. also Discovery Plus. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Discovery Plus. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. It's a few different places. So yeah. you might be able to catch it on YouTube if you get it in the first 24 hours before they take it down. Facts. So. <laughs> Facts. Oh, it's a, it gets copyright, but it takes YouTube time to take it down. So the episode is right. usually up on YouTube for like 24 hours or something like after the Friday after. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. true. So when they told you that you were accepted to be on this show, like, how did you feel? What emotions did you have? Like, what did you go through, like, mentally when they were like, did they send you an email? Did they call you? Like, how did they let you know that you were accepted to be on the show? Well, okay. So I went through three different emotions. So when I got the call, um, I was super excited. I got the call from the EP. So I got a call from a Los Angeles number on my phone, right? Hey, Kayla, blah, blah, blah. I just want to let you know, you know, you're on the show. So initially I was shocked. <laughs> Secondly, I was excited. Like I was super, super excited. And then thirdly, I was like, duh. <laughs> they, basically <laughs> me, <laughs> they basically told me in my second interview, like, Oh, you it. We just need to do this for um for you know clerical reasons because we got to do this, but like we really want you. So I knew that they were going to um that I kind of knew based on that interview that they really wanted me on the show. They were very entertained by me. <laughs> um, but I also, you know, was kind of nervous because they called a week later than they said that they were going to. And so you're gonna have an answer on around so and so and so and so date, and it was like a whole week later. So that's why I was excited because I was like. I know these people want me. Am I tripping? Why is it taking so long? Right. Like, you're playing with my emotions right now. <laughs> like, am I really exactly. not going to be on the show? <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no. So by the time it set in, I was just like, duh. I mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, waiting for to, I'm waiting for y'all to catch up. <laughs> right. But, but I know I'm outspoken and a lot of people actually uh, can't do that and still like keep like the thick skin on when people criticize them. And that is something that I can do. And I've dealt with like being on the Peef and being on these other stations. I've dealt with that harsh criticism. So I was like, I can deal with it. Mm -hmm. huh, I didn't know it was going to be like this, but I'm doing okay. So I definitely think they made a good choice. I think they did too. I think they did <laughs> as well. Okay. So what made you want to be on reality TV? Like what made you, what was going through your head? Why did you say, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this. Why did you decide to do this specific reality TV show? Well, to be honest, I never heard of the show. Mm -hmm. I did not know about the show. I got a call from a casting agent that I had worked with years ago who was like, Hey, are you single? There's a show I'm casting for. As soon as they told me, you know, I was on this job, the first person I thought of was you. Mm. I'm like, okay, well, what show is this? Ready to Love. I'm like, what show is that? <laughs> mm. I went out, I looked into it. She's like, this is a classy show, show for mature adults, for people who know who they are and people that are above <laughs> drama, people that are really genuinely looking for love. And I was just like, Wow, like this could be a great opportunity because I am a content creator. My life is a part of my content. And mm -hmm. so if I can, and I'm also, I also am looking for love. I was engaged before it was a toxic situation and I was finally like to a good place. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like if I could find a husband, like in this instance, and then we can like do this together, like make content together and like do media and stuff together. Like this is like, it's like the best of both worlds. Like I can get everything yeah. that I want, you know? And so that was really my mindset going into it. And I was just like, well, hey, why not? I mean, retrograde's over, let's do this, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you get to meet Oprah? That's no, like the I number didn't. one question. <laughs> People always ask that. Did you get to meet Oprah? And it's like, no, Oprah was not there. I heard Will Packer <laughs> was there, but Oprah was not there. Mm. Did you get to uh, meet Will Packer? I didn't get to meet him. He was in the room where they watch all the screens. He didn't come and meet anyone. Mm -hmm. So just to let everybody know, Will Packer. Oh, can you let everybody know who Will Packer is? <laughs> oh. Will Packer is the production company in-house that produces and 
which you know coordinates this show and with Lightheart Entertainment. Too. Mm -hmm. With yeah. Lightheart mm -hmm. Entertainment, they are the ones that produce this show. They're the one that put together the stories and the 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 situations that you see and do all the casting mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Will Packer. They're dope, and um, he's awesome. Shout out to Black yeah. content creators, producers, and directors. Yes, yes. Okay, so once you found out you was on the show, who did you call? Who did you tell? What did like? What was you? Was you like? Oh my god! I got no. I go tell. No, I'm. I ain't gonna tell nobody. Nope. I was like, let me call. No, I can't do. I don't know. She's not really doing the show. Like, did you have? <laughs> did you have that moment? Like, not to tell anybody though. You can't tell anybody. So what I did was, I told my parents. Mm -hmm. I told my brother. Both my brothers. I told my best friend, who's also my publicist. Yeah. Um, and two of my other best friends that you'll see one of them, excuse me, came on the show. Kelly came on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I also told two of the people I was dating <laughs> at the time. I was just like, yeah, I'm going on this dating show. And it's just kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'm single. So just so you know, so I don't pop up on your screen, you know. You know, yeah. What, what did they say when you told him he was dating? Or you they were like, "Oh, dating? really?" You know, I mean, one of them was like, "I don't know, if, I don't know if he was taking me serious or not." He was like, kind of wishy washy, and so he was kind of like, "Oh, you'll be back." <laughs> and then the other one was like, um, "You know, he was just like." Cool, you know, if that's what you want to do, I don't think that you should. I think that you should, you know, try to put more energy over here. But I just like I didn't see, I didn't see it, I didn't see it. So I didn't really want to put the energy on over there. So you know, we just keep it. We kept it very surface, and like as the show went on, you know, we still talk, maybe hung out a few times, but yeah, I mean, I had to let them know so that I don't want bad energy i just like to be honest yeah exactly mm. yeah chad because I, I i don't know my thought is is if you were like let's let me focus let me put more energy let me like i feel like why did i have to tell you that i'm about to be on a dating show for you to feel like you can now start putting in the energy like you could have been putting the energy in and we could have yeah. actually maybe been together and i wouldn't have had to even do the show i wouldn't even thought about doing the show if you was doing that energy from the very beginning exactly one of them don't talk to me no more <clears throat> that's what, I told, them. That's what no. I told them i said well if you were doing what you need to do then i would have never been on that show but i'm single and we are not in a relationship or committed or doing anything intimate we are just right. like talking a lot and building an emotional connection but you are not being intentional. So right. I'm going to keep dating. <laughs> right. Facts. So real quick. So someone, because you just mentioned that. So someone said that, did they act like LJ's ex? <laughs> no, they didn't act like LJ's ex. Cause I was not having any kind of intimate relationship with them. Um, there was some jealousy a little bit, but that didn't really even start until the show aired. Like throughout the process, they didn't really care. Cause I still would talk to them in the same manner. I would still make mm -hmm. time for them. Maybe not as much cause I was so busy, but I would still make time for them or whatever, but like we weren't like they weren't we weren't it wasn't like all the way like that. So right. Nah, you know, typical yeah. men. Yeah. So when you guys were filming, um, how long is the filming process? Like the days that did you film like seven days a week? Did you film like three hours a day, seven hours a day? Did you only film like three hours a, three days a week? How was the filming? Like how often did you guys have to film? So filming was five days a week. Um, some were six days filming would be about three to five hours a day, unless there was a group day. So if there was anything like in a house, the white party, the, 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 the dinner, any of the things that were all together, those are 16 to 18 hour days, but the dates and stuff like that. We had a lot of dates. I know y'all, I know whatever, but there was a lot of dates. Like you would have a date like every day or every other day you would have a date. And you would, it would take about three to five hours for the dates every day. So when you're every day, feeling, like five to six, yeah. five to six times a week, there were some weeks that were maybe four, depending on the week. And then they dwindled down as the pro. No, no, no. They actually ramped up as the process went on. 
Like mm. as you stayed in the process longer, like there would be right. more filming and more mm. and more filming. Mm -hmm. Because there's less people to film. So now they need right. <laughs> they, they need more content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. So while you're filming, you're sitting there filming, how many cameras are there? Like, is it just one camera? Is it two cameras? Is it 10 cameras? Like, is it a lot of production? Or is it just like, is it small? Like, like how how is it with the production while you're being filmed? Mm. When you're on the dates, it's not that much. When you're on the dates, it's just two cameras, one on them, one on you. And that's really it. When it's like those big things where it's everybody, it's a lot of cameras. There are cameras everywhere. There's cameras far away watching you. You could be all the way over there. There's a camera in your face. There's a cat like that they they need to get angles, I guess. So, you know, when it's a lot of us, when it's all of us together, it's a lot of cameras. But on the dates, there are only two cameras because you're in a public setting. Like you're around there, there's people in this restaurant that are just here eating. So they can't have like, you know what I mean? They just set up two cameras next to your table. Unless it's that like like a scene where no one's there. But for the most part, there's people there in the restaurant while you're filming. So right. it's, you know, a light and two cameras. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Miss Pamela Smith. She says you can't have a regular job while being on the show. Um, yes, I had a regular sh job while on the show. It was very, very, very stressful. Um, and so I actually had to give up one of my projects because I couldn't balance both of it. Mm. Um, it was really tough. It was very, very, very hard. And that was, that's added on to the stress of it. And I can speak for all my cast members when I say that, especially people like Randall, especially people like Justice, it was tough. Like, yeah, it was rough. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to pull this up once one reason, because I actually clicked it. But this is one of the questions that I, I was going to ask you. Christopher Marklin says, how much of the show is actual reality? And that's I was going to ask you, like, is it scripted? Is it real? Is it in real life? Like, yeah, the, the show is not scripted. It's not a scripted show at all. There's no scripts. No one's told what to say. Well, I wasn't told what to say. Mm -hmm. Um there are inferences where you may be put in position, but no one tells you what to say. You know, it's very real in that instance where like all the conversations like organic, like whatever people are saying is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, you may not have an option always for who you're speaking with because they have to mix people up around. Otherwise, the show won't work because some people will just gravitate towards someone and just be with them the entire time. But it's just like, you're yeah. supposed to be getting to know other people. So that's the whole point, you know, of the show. So. Right. Right. Yeah. So with the 16 hour to 18 hour days, do they tell you in advance, Donna D asks. Um, yeah. So you'll, so they let you know. When it's a long day, they let you know you're going to be here all day. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying not to <laughs> um so with the show do you do your own hair do you do your own makeup like the clothes do you have to pay for everything is it specific clothes that they tell you that you can and cannot wear like how is like how is it with you coming for your scenes and stuff like that like do you yeah. provide everything yeah so you provide all your own clothes. There is in no instance where anyone provides clothes for you. But there are instances where you are told not to wear certain clothes, like certain colors are permitted, not permitted for you to wear. I've been requested to change before because they just said like, it doesn't make you look good. The color, those colors don't look good or something like that. Mm. Um, but no, they don't provide any clothing. <clears throat> they don't provide any hair. You gotta get your own weave. But they will do your hair. Um, the confessionals, all of the interviews are you get full hair and makeup done, but you have to you have to come with your hair already. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna sew in a whole weave. No, they're not sewing it on, but you can just come with it, just like, and they'll curl it up or ponytail it or do whatever. Like they'll style it, mm -hmm. um, and then they'll do the full they'll do a full face of makeup every time. My makeup was except for the very first. No, no, no. Full, full makeup for every interview. When you're on set, you everything is you. Like so, mm -hmm. you, when you see us on dates, you see us in the house, 
You see us in the white party. All of those are all of our own clothes, own hair, own makeup, own everything. The only time we get hair and makeup is for the interviews where you see us like talking shit behind the scenes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was it any times because with the certain colors you can't wear, of course, that just means there were certain things that you couldn't wear. Does that mean that you had to go out and buy more clothes to be able to stay within their guidelines of the colors and what you could and you couldn't, you could not wear? Like, did you have to spend like extra money on wardrobe to be able to like film and stuff like that? Me personally, I did just because I like to be fabulous. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't necessarily have to because it was more like no white stripes and mm -hmm. intense patterns. So, but most people bought clothes. Most everybody was buying clothes because it's like once you wear something, you can't wear it again. So, well, I'm not right. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I bought, I, I spent a lot of money on clothes and shoes and stuff. I really did. Uh, yeah. Mm. That was tough. I get it, Chad. I get it. <laughs> it was tough. It was okay. tough. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, so oh God. So my thing is is without getting too much into the show, because that's not what this is about, but because we're discussing the show, I don't want to talk too much about it because everyone, just to let everybody know, I ain't going to tell anybody, I'm going to wait till the end. I'm going to wait till the end. <laughs> but yes, I have an announcement. I'm not going to make it until the end. So those of you that's watching, stay tuned just a little while longer because I do have an announcement to make. But um, for the most part of being on the show, like how was it being on the show with the other castmates? Like, um, you know, without giving me too much information, just was it like, oh my God, it was a good experience. Like it was like a family or no, like the scenes that we saw, like when it was confrontation, was it real confrontation or was it like, you know what I mean? Like, was it produced up or was it something that really happened genuinely because of what she said or what he did, et cetera? Girl, all that stuff was really happening. <laughs> Any conflict scene you saw, it was actually worse than what you saw. Um, <laughs> yes. So I will say that. Uh, in terms of like it feeling like a family with the cast, mm -hmm. I never got that energy because mm -hmm. I wasn't that girl, I guess. I, um, I was always very nice and cordial with everyone. We all were very like especially at the beginning, it was always good vibes. Like we were good. Like, oh my God, we're excited to be here. You know what I mean? Like what's going to happen today? What's Tommy about to do next? You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, as the time went on and the pressure built up and the, the people start being in their feelings about people, it got very, in person, it was very you know, it was a little bit fake aside of, aside of those times mm. where people had actual blowups. People would talk behind each other's back, not to their face. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of how it was. Like people wouldn't say stuff to their face. There were a couple of blowups though in the ladies lounge. They haven't shown any of them. They're all past. They haven't shown none of them. So, mm. but there was like two different blowups. I was involved in one of them, but uh, yeah, they just, they didn't show it. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't need to be shown. It's, it's like petty right. stuff. Right. I'm I'm glad that they didn't. I'm glad yeah. that they didn't. Especially over the past couple of seasons. It's kind of like, let's get back to the love. Like, that's just how, exactly. you know, I was thinking. Like, that's like what you said about going on the show. That was like my same thought process. I'm like, I'm about to find me a husband, child. Yes, I'm about to honey. find me so, like a boo thing or something. You I know? told <laughs> them, too, in casting. I'm like, I want to be engaged by New Year's. Like, yes. are y'all going to make this happen? Like, who are y'all about to bring on this show? <laughs> yes, in real life. I even told tell the story about how me and my daughter, like when I told her I was going to be on a reality TV show and I had to ask her permission, she was only eight years old at the time. And she, we had to have a real conversation because she like 40, going on 45 <laughs> in real life. And she was like, you know, mommy, you actually really might meet somebody. Like, I really took it serious. I was so naive because I hadn't really watched the previous seasons and stuff like that. I'm thinking like, these are like-minded people that's ready to date and ready to find love and ready to, I'm thinking it's a, like a real, you know, and Me I was too, just girl. like, 
I was like, that's not what that's not what this is. <laughs> well, it wasn't for me because I was like, wait a minute, like they out here playing games. I was like, I didn't need to be on a TV show to deal with the same crap that I was dealing with. Anyway. I, I was just about to I was just about to say to you, it is very similar to what's going on in the dating pool. In the real and world, for all of my hey. followers, for everyone watching, remember that when you're watching this. Yep. You know, when you want to criticize some of the women, remember what it's like outside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it was very much similar to that in the show, I feel. You know, even though maybe the goal or the reason was different, yeah. but there's still a lot of, you know, manipulation and lies and yeah. People saying one thing and doing another. I mean, it's very telling of, of of what does happen, you know, in real dating. But it's you're putting a pressure cooker when you're on the show. So yeah. it's, it is different in that instance that you're forced to say that your Tommy forces you like, what do you want to do? What are you doing? You know what I mean? Versus in real mm -hmm. life, you know, you could just go somebody or you could just like, <laughs> you know what? Be like, I'm, I'm going out of town. I'll talk to you when I get back. Like, and just deal with them whenever you want to. So mm -hmm. you don't really have that option when you're on a show like this. So that's what makes it difficult because, yeah. 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 <sighs> oh, God. So I thought this was a great question. When it's time to eliminate, Donna D says, when it's time to eliminate the guys, how far in advance do they tell you who will actually go? I understand production chooses who will go and not the cast. You can, like I said, you can choose to answer when I spoke to you earlier. Or you can, I you am not going to directly on that. I will just mm -hmm. say that you don't know until right before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they ask you to keep the same hairstyle throughout the show? They do ask you to maintain a hairstyle for at least two to three weeks before you change it. <sighs> yeah, so that you don't look different like every single time they see you. Right. <laughs> God, man, y'all have it so good. <sighs> do you feel like you made any genuine and long lasting friendships or connections? Absolutely. Made very genuine connections with a couple castmates, producers and other people hmm. that I can't speak on yet. Yeah. All right, last question before we move forward. Do you have any recommendations um, to change the format of the show if you choose to answer or not? Hmm. Recommendations to change the format. Mm -hmm. I would say, I would say being able to ha have a have a better way in when, in which I mean I think the best thing we could do is just eliminate the the lounges. <laughs> I hate the lounge. <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again. I hate the lounge. You know, let's eliminate the lounge. I don't need to talk to other women about how they feel about who I'm dating. Let them go in their confession and, and do it or something like that. And then maybe Tommy have a conversation with whoever the two people are, are in the bottom or something. I don't know. But having to come and sit together and talk to somebody about how you feel about someone. Mm -hmm. And then they possibly may or may not go back and tell the person you're connecting with what you said to try to like throw dirt in whatever you're building with them because they want to build something for them. Like it's just problematic when we have to sit here. They do it on purpose. I, I, it's just problematic. Oh, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? If you feel in somebody or you yeah. have multiple people that you're feeling and somebody that's feeling mm -hmm. one of those people go and say, oh, she said she was feeling the other guy. And I was about yeah. to say, Kayla, don't forget it's a safe space. <laughs> It, it was tough. I just, I just think that there should be an amendment to the, the confet to the, the lounges. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Agreed. Um. Oh gosh. Okay. Um. So uh, with this uh, position and being on reality TV, this specific show, um, have you been on any other reality TV shows? I have not been mm. on any reality TV shows. No. Mm. Have you thought about maybe doing more reality TV shows moving forward? I have, but not necessarily in the dating space. Mm. Mm -hmm. Would uh, you 
I don't know. It's very emotional. It would have yeah. to be. It would have to be a very ideal type of situation for me to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, like what kind of show? Give us an example. Like a show I would do or wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would do. Um. Honey, somebody like, out there do, doing a show might might see this and they might be like, yeah, we I, want mean, I want to do like game shows okay. or I want to do like shows that are about like friends and family, you know, or the dating game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's cool, you know, um, but I, but I would like to do probably like those fun shows that are more like like game shows and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or design shows. Like I would love to host a design show um, of some kind. Um, you know, you could start your own. I mean, that's true. Like in real life. That's facts. Like, yeah. Like, um, you know, and that's what the missing link is. I mean, that's what I do. You know what I mean? In a sense. Don Day in the chat says Kayla could do Big Brother. It's funny because I was a finalist for Big Brother in 2016. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got flown funny. out to LA and everything, the top 40, but you know, they only picked 20 people. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. So if they had an all star ready to love and brought like back all the cast that didn't find love, not saying you did or you didn't because we don't know. Um, but say, for instance, if you didn't find love, like, would you do like an all star ready to love? Do I get to know who's on there before I go on there? Nope. So it's like a bunch of the guys from. So it's a bunch of guys that didn't find love from the show and girls who didn't find love for the show. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's like an all star. <laughs> So you kind of know who's going to be on there. It's the people that we've seen. There are some people from some other seasons. <laughs> Who might I ask? If you don't mind sharing, maybe. And some upcoming seasons. There, there are quite a few people that I would uh, like really? to get to know. So I would be open to it. I would want to know who's on the produce production team. But other than that, I would love to do something like that. I would love to do it. And I'll try to be on more on time because I know they're sick of me because, you know. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I like I said, guys, we don't know if Kayla finds love or not. Y'all got to stay tuned because y'all in, in for a treat with this season. Y'all, this reunion, I just cannot wait for y'all to see it. I and I want to see it too because I want to see how it's going to be edited. But this is honestly going to be wild. So y'all, yeah. oh my gosh. This yeah. month of October is about to be lit. <laughs> Starting this Friday when y'all meet my parents. Oh, oh, we're well, we're here for it. And I'm going to be doing the watch party now that I have electricity again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just to kind of put that out there, and I'm going to do a shameless plug. If you do not find love on this show in about two weeks, I am going to be starting my own dating show on The Missing Link. The uh, show is going to be called Single Soulmates, as in S-E-O-U-L-M-A-T-E-S, Single Soulmates. So uh, hop on to Single Soulmates and shoot your shot if you are single by the end of Ready to Love. So you don't have to say anything. I don't even want you to look a kind of way. I'm just putting the shameless plug out there. <laughs> <laughs> got to be watching to find out oh god exactly so um is it any projects that you're working on that you're allowed to talk about and that you would like to share with everybody um one thing i can share is that i am coming out with a home um line of different decor items and things like that i'm working on it right now so just look out for that. I'm going to be revamping some of my services for the Monet Group Design, start including some different type of events to do as well. Um, and maybe some merch. Who okay. knows? That's pretty exciting. Oh, gosh. Okay. So let everybody know where they can find you all over the platforms. Yes, people. You know, you can find me right here on YouTube at Kayla.com. And everywhere at Kayla.com. Um, I am on TikTok. 
being a young hot chick. Okay. So you can catch me over there. <laughs> Since that's what I am this season, you can catch me over there uh, on TikTok, Instagram, and right here on YouTube. My show is every Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern. It's called Today with Gay. That's pretty amazing. So real quick, someone wants to know what your sign is. Mr. I am a Gemini, baby. I am an air sign, and uh, I love it. I'm very multifaceted, so yeah, I love it. So just to let everybody know, everywhere that you can find Kayla, um, definitely check back down in the description box below. If you have not, all the links are there. So all you have to do is literally click the link to her Instagram. Um, if you want to find out more about her event planning services, the Monet Group, definitely that's down below as well. Her YouTube channel, the link is down below. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. I appreciate you so much, Kayla. This was a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for thank being for here me. with me. Yes, thank you for kicking my season off, my new second season two of The Missing Link. Yeah, and I hope that I get to see you very, very soon, which I am, guys. Just to let everybody know, tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> I am going to be doing my panel review with my amazing panelists, and we're going to be discussing Ready to Love episode number 10 and guess who will be joining my panel tomorrow oh. you <laughs> <laughs> yes i will be there tomorrow i cannot wait to hear what y'all have to say about this episode Woo, lord i was going to say it just to let you know and this is such a good episode for you to be on <laughs> Because I know they're going to have questions for you. That's one thing about my panel. We're very respectable. Respectable, is that a word? You know, we're, we're down to earth. We're cool. The I love them. We're going to have Gus. We're going to have Mr. Mita Joe. We're going to have uh, Jamie Alexander. We're going to have Tyrone. Okay. I'm still waiting for other okay. um, someone else to kind of confirm. But yeah, so, and I know they're going to have some questions for you. So be ready for my panelists. Like I said, they're very respectful. Very cool. Very, very down to earth. I don't know if you've I seen I am before. nervous. But yeah, they're going to definitely yeah drill you. And, I, and I'm and i just going to probably, uh, I'm sure a few times I'm probably going to have to cut my camera off. It's a little bit different. Not as like, you know, stuffy, but it's we just have yeah. fun. And I, we're so, yeah. it's going to be so cool to have you. So thank you so much yeah. for joining me tonight. And I will absolutely see you and everyone in the chat. All 156 of you guys will see you tomorrow as well. Anyway, I love you so much, guys. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out. If you have not subscribed to my channel and to Kayla's channel, make sure you do that. We have so much amazing content coming your way. And other than that, love you guys. <laughs>